Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through a whole bunch of Shadow Dark adventures that have a strong sword and sorcery vibe designed to be sort of sword and sorcery style adventures. I really like all of these. These are by Tom Wilson at Throwy Games. I want to uh, say thank you to Tom. So um, I backed a little while back, I backed the Slumbering City Kickstarter that he had, and I've reviewed that adventure on this channel before. It's not my favorite adventure I've ever reviewed. I like a lot about it, I've talked about it, but they had a couple issues with some of the things that it was uh, that it was doing. However, um, along with that file, when, when the Kickstarter came through, he just sent me, and I think I think everybody who backed it at the level that I did, just also got these free adventures. Um, now, they're not free on his on Drive for RPG, they're a dollar or two each. Um, I'll put a link below to where you can get them. But we just got them all for free for backing the, the Slumbering City, and that was awesome. I mean, it was, it was thrown in there. I didn't expect it at all. Super happy. And and they're really good adventures. I like these a lot. They're all really short. Uh, these are all pamphlet adventures. I'm going to be going through 11 of them. <laughs> so a lot of them. But they're all like just a page or two. Uh, really, they're all two pages. They're pamphlet um, uh, forms. So there's two pages in the PDF. And so you kind of have to do a little flipping just to, you know, follow the map, because usually the map's on one page of the pamphlet, and then the other descriptions will be on the other page, so you kind of have to flip back and forth. But I'll go through each of them very briefly, and just give you guys a sense of what they're like. These are really cool adventures. I'm not going to be going room by room through each of them, although you probably probably could and not take too long, because these are short adventures. These are, you know, plug-and-play, little bits of content you're going to throw into your world. Maybe it's one session, maybe it's part of a session, um, maybe it's a couple adventures or a couple sessions for these adventures, but these are not long-term campaigns. If you strung them uh, strung them together, they would be, you know, you have to connect them yourself. They're not part of a series or anything like that. But they all have the same implied shared world. It's very, you know, it just seems like it's Conan the Barbarians, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, that pre, you know, post-Atlantis, but uh, maybe, maybe just a little bit post-Atlantis sort of thing. <laughs> One of the adventures is basically just that. Um, but it's set in the world of Hyperborea, basically. I mean, it does never it never says Hyperborea, but like Kush is mentioned and uh, Punt is mentioned, I think, and there's maybe Samaria is mentioned. Uh, maybe Hyperborea is mentioned in one of them or not. Atlantis certainly is. So it's sword and sorcery drawn right out of Conan the Barbarian, and it would fit into any sword and sorcery style adventure because the tone of each adventure is just right on. That sword and sorcery flavor is really good throughout all of these adventures. So the first one I'm going to cover is the Charnel Chambers of the Thrice Damned Oathbreakers. A great, flavorful title, and most of the adventures have a great title like that. Essentially, you have a tomb here where there are three relics that are very powerful and cursed, and they're hidden, and you've been hired to find them. You know, you could change that if you wanted. There's nothing really necessary in the, in the adventure that requires you to have been hired to come here. You could just have it be, you know, you stumbled on this tomb, or it's, it's rumored and that it's out here and you want to find the stuff that, that's within it, or you're trying to find one of the relics, maybe not all three, you just want one of them. Regardless, it's a low-level adventure, first to second level for two to four characters. And you get a very brief map here. Now, one of the things that the pamphlet form sort of lends itself to <laughs> is a much more linear style of dungeon. None of these dungeons are very big. You're looking at, you know, kind of three-room, four-room, five-room dungeons. They're, they're, they're pretty small. That's why I say they're kind of plug-and-play, right? You can put these into any ongoing campaign as little side quests or maybe as a, you know, an adventure you're, you're, you spend a night on or something like that. But the dungeons aren't huge. They're not sprawling. These are pretty linear, pretty straightforward. You're going from room to room, doing the things in each room. Maybe there are some side passages, maybe there are some choices about how to approach it, but usually you're dealing with traps and monsters that, you know, risk-reward you know, uh, throughout. Do you want to mess with this thing? And if you do, you know, there's a very probably likely obvious trap that will occur or a monster will animate. Um, that's sort of what you're looking at with this first dungeon, you're trying to get your way through. There are a few ways in here to dodge some of the fights. If you're clever, if your players are clever, some of them are pretty oblique. I'm not sure the players would necessarily think to do some of the things that you would take to do that. But, you know, uh, mostly it's it's a very short little adventure. You could modify just any little thing that you wanted to do very easily. And I really like the adventure as written. It's, it's really good. Flavorful. You get sword and sorcery in its tone. You're dealing with undead, curses, traps, um, you know, classic Conan the Barbarian <laughs> dungeon crawling vibe. I really like this one. Great introduction. You could you could throw this in as a, you know, first adventure or maybe a second adventure or maybe again just as like a side quest if you think of it that way, right? Maybe you're dealing with a little town and there's this valley somewhere nearby that has this cursed tomb in it and there's these thrice damned oath breakers who've been buried there. Maybe you need to uh, maybe just have a rumor to go find it. Maybe some rich merchant really wants something. Anyway, really cool adventure, really short. I like it a lot. 
Uh, and they're all like this. They're all in this tone, uh, in this tone and uh, in this presentation. The second is Once So Beautiful. This one's great. Uh, this is an interesting one because the, the reason that you would come here is sort of nebulous. It's left up in the open, and it really is just kind of a very short entrance into an encounter. That's really what you're looking at here. There's a couple of things leading up to the encounter, but really you're dealing with the one encounter. And the thing that you're fighting is this cursed princess who's been turned into a demon spider thing, and she produces them. And she's sort of human still, and she could be made human again if you do an act of kindness to her. But that's about it. Why you would know to do an act of kindness, why you would want to do an act of kindness to save her, why you're coming here in the first place, all of that is left up to you. But it's a really flavorful idea. And the description here is beautiful. The art throughout is great. Um, great, really yeah, terrifying piece of art there for the demon princess thing. There's some cool magic items you're dealing with. There's a great map of the dungeon. And, but it's just a really straightforward. You walk into it, go through a couple rooms, and then, boom, you're in the encounter with her. So this would be, it seems to me, more the culmination of something, or maybe the beginning of something. Maybe she, maybe you don't really want it to just be an act of kindness to her, or maybe the act of kindness you have to do for her involves going somewhere else, right, and doing some bigger quest or something like that, and then coming back to her. Um, you know, I think that that would all be a great way of, of putting this into a, um, a campaign. Uh, great, very in line with, uh, again, that old sword and sorcery vibe cursed it's the greek mythology right the cursed princess who's been you know uh, maybe cursed by the gods uh because of some you know <laughs> boast that she made about being more beautiful than it. who knows what you know often you see that sort of thing in the greek mythology and old mythology so it'd be a great uh, right in that in line with all of that i like this one a lot this is two to four characters for second to third level it's a little harder and it's pretty gross i mean in terms of spiders you know birthing and stuff so <laughs> if you have arachnophobia uh, maybe not the best adventure but I, I like it a lot even though I'm I'm pretty pretty phobic of spiders uh, but still I, I was able to get through this one um, just reading through it great uh, cool adventure lots of magic items lots of treasure and that's one of the things that you're gonna see through all of these adventures is that there's usually tons of treasure tons of magic items which fits with a Conan the Barbarian you know sword and sorcery spend all the wealth you get very quickly carousing sort of a game it's not going to fit for everybody's game, but I think it really fits the tone of the of the genre. The next adventure is Behind the Red Door. Again, you see it's a very short dungeon. It's a couple rooms, a couple encounters, and then the big climactic encounter. And that's pretty much it. This one is just there is a, an old temple that was cursed and abandoned, and a necromancer found it, and he's using it to, you know, to power his magic and to research spells and stuff. And, uh, and so it's very straightforward. It's, again, almost just like a boss fight and a lead-up into that boss fight with a few creatures and a few extra things going on there. Um, with some very powerful magic items as well. The Staff of Halt Time. Not rechargeable, but still. Each expended charge halts time for all within 50 feet of the caster for one round. During that time, the caster can make a single action. If the caster leaves the area of the effect, the spell ends. That's really good. That's really, really good. There's no recharging, right? So you need to be aware of that. And it doesn't really say, as far as I can see, how many charges it has. So that's up to you. You could say it has one, it has ten, it has twenty. However many you want to, to give him and however many uh, the, you want the players to have after the fight, because that would be really, really strong. Um, yeah, very cool. Very cool, and again, right in tone with a sword and sorcery adventure. What's happening here, the descriptions of the place, the amount of treasure you can get here, the kinds of creatures you're fighting, magic as a very dark thing, as opposed to just kind of a neutral thing. That's kind of the, the tone throughout all of these two. Is when magic is presented, it's usually cursed, it's usually dangerous. That's one of the hallmarks of sword and sorcery, as far as I know, as far as I can tell. Great adventure. Again, little adventure, but works with what it's going for. And that's true for all of these. Tom Wilson, I think they're all edited by Joshua Newing. Uh, the next adventure here is Tower of the Last Defenders. I like this one a lot because also it has a bit more choice. You can choose how you're going to approach the dungeon by you know, going left or right, going up a floor, exploring this floor or not. Um, are you going to enter on the second floor? Or are you going to enter on the first? There's some choices about how to approach it more than the others, and I really like that. Uh, Tower of the Last Defenders, it's again low level, second to uh, two to four characters for second to third level. Uh, essentially there's this tower, you know, overgrown or out in the wilderness on an, on an old ancient tower that was built. It's got this magic um, defense that attacks anybody who comes nearby. It's got skeletons inside, some treasure that you can find, uh, ghostly captains, a bag of holding, which is pretty cool. Those are always fun to find. Lots and lots of treasure. And some plus one maces, plus one swords, plus one daggers. You're looking at, you know, classic, classic stuff to run into. 
Uh, the rare book, An Effective, Sol Effective Soldier Combat by Gustav Fregel. It's <laughs> a sought after tome. That's kind of funny. Uh, any who read it get a permanent plus one to attacks if fighting side by side with melee compatriots. That's really cool. Really cool. I like that. those sorts of um, treasures, right? Um, and it's also worth a thousand gold pieces. So it's definitely worth some experience points in Shadow Dark terms. Great, great adventure. Uh, very fun. I like this one a lot. Again, you throw it into your world. You have a, sh a, a tower out in the wilderness. Maybe they pass by it. Maybe they see it in the distance. Uh, maybe they're sent there. Maybe they're not. And it's just something that they run into on the road. These sorts of plug-and-play adventures material, I love. I love it because, again, there's there's so little needed to just throw it into your world easily and have a fun session out of it or a couple fun sessions out of it or even just part of a session. Just throw it in there. Easy enough, and you're done. Awesome. Very cool. Canyon of Fractured Ice. This one's really cool. I like this one a lot. Essentially, it's a higher level, 6th to 8th level for 2 to 4 characters. Um, one of the interesting things here is that idea of a lot of these adventures are for 2 to 4 characters. One of them is for 1 to 2 characters, which is really interesting. Most tables are a little bit bigger than that, right? 3 to 5, I think, is the average. So the idea that you're going to have an adventure for 1 to 2 characters, that's kind of cool. This one's 2 to 4. But anyway, um, dealing with a Frost Dragon, which is cool because I don't think there's a Frost Dragon in the Shadow Dark monster set so it's cool that you have the stat blocks for it here essentially you just have a, a canyon of fractured ice you can't get across it any other way than through the canyon magic doesn't work so you can't fly over it, it there's just sort of like a, a you know an, an infinite column of anti-magic going up <laughs> or something like that and below so you have to go through and there are these floating fragments of ice and snow and you have to try to leap from crystal to crystal or, or you know from and, and of course magic doesn't work in this area either so you kind of have to climb and jump and use rope and picks and stuff and get across it's a cool idea and then the different rocks have different things happening on them and different things to find on them and you could make it kind of like a point crawl right and the players can you, you describe a little bit of what's on the next two and they have to pick which one to jump to that that sort of thing a really cool one i think this would be a fun little adventure but it really is getting from one side to the other and then like the goal is what's on the other side and it's not detailed in fact the note here it says note that the portals capabilities and challenges are left entirely to the gm to design so this is designed to be plugged into a bigger thing and again a lot of them are like that so really, really appreciate adventures like that, and this design is really fun. I like the one. And the stuff, again, the stuff that you can run into on these different shards of ice is kind of cool. Uh, the next one here is Swirling Sands of Sin. This one's awesome, too. Classic things getting in over their head, and also the thing that they're trying to summon is a skeletal Tyrannosaurus demigod. That's awesome. And super old school sword and sorcery, right? Where you're not dealing necessarily with dragons every time or with extra planar beings. You're dealing with like really big monsters and dinosaurs. That's really cool. So um, it's up to you to decide if it's a good and just god or if it's truly a god, sorry, excuse me, or if it's just an animated skeleton. I misread that. A <laughs> good god or yeah, a god or just an animated skeleton. Either way, it's really cool. And you, you're coming into this sort of deserty area with ruins and, and there's a cult trying to raise their... They're this, this demigod, they think. Um, you know, and it's going to eat them all. I think that's what it says, that, that they're not going to be able to control it. That's awesome. Uh, continuing its rampage beyond the dunes. So if the players get here, they're 7th to ninth level character, so this is high level. So this creature is a lot harder. 45 hit points at, for a party of 6 ninth level creatures? I don't know. In my experience with Shatterdark, that's actually fairly weak. Um, so I might boost this up, because this is supposed to be a demigod here. But, uh, I mean, especially with only one attack... Yeah, I think I would boost this up in terms of its in terms of you know you're at ninth level. I'd make this a really strong beast, but maybe you're getting here after a long fight. Anyway, it wouldn't be hard to deal with, I think, as is. So maybe make this one a little stronger. But I really like this adventure too. You're dealing with raiders and the desert chiefs, the priests and the acolytes, the cultists. Maybe there's someone you're trying to rescue. There's a magical canteen here, which is great. A mouthful of water, clean water, three times per day is what it magically generates. That's really cool in a desert campaign or in a, uh, in a more low magic campaign. That'd be awesome. So, great. Awesome, cool adventure. But again, plug it in. This one maybe is a little bit bigger in that you're probably following the cult as they've captured people, right? So maybe you're, this is the culmination of a longer campaign or a longer adventure or something like that. But this is a great final, final place for it. And the map is more of a point crawl. You wouldn't have to have it laid out in this way. You kind of have it just spread out as you want. But this is just that those are the major locations on it. The next adventure is The Thing with a Thousand Heads, an adventure for four to six characters of eighth to tenth level. And this one essentially just has one thing to fight. And it's pretty strong. It's got 75 hit points, and that's certainly hard. Um, it's get a bite, two claws, and a grapple. Or a bite and two claws, and it grapples if it gets you with its claws. It's really hard. It has regeneration automatically. 
immune to poison and non-magical weapons and fear. Uh, it reduces your actions by minus one. I think that just means, yeah, minus one to all the things that you do uh, on your rolls. It's a tough creature, and this is sort of, you know, you're, this is another one of those towers. Uh, you kind of just stumble into a tower and maybe you're sent there. But regardless, uh, why you would stay unless you're here to kill the thing, the only treasure that you can find is kind of hidden behind a locked door or buried into the dirt. And so it's not like there's probably obvious rumors of treasure here, although there might be. But really, there's a, a horrible creature that things avoid, right? No one, nothing comes near this. Even the, the, the monsters, lions and tigers, will stop within 100 feet of the tower, not going closer. So you know, curious players will certainly come here, uh, but maybe there's a reason to come here. But there's nothing really given to you other, other than just the place itself, the monster and the treasure. So again, plug it into your world and, and you find things to <laughs> find reasons for the players to come here. I like this one a lot, and the creature itself is really gruesome and, and, and you know, kind of hard to fight. It, it just at first, it's sort of this ghastly apparition, and then slowly but surely it forms into this thing, and then you can fight it, and then it's really hard once you actually can fight it. Um, you can trigger it early if you dig down. So maybe, again, you're, you're here to find a particular magic item or a particular person's bones, or maybe you're just here to, uh, you know, to, to stop the, the thing that is uh, the curse on the hill, or, you know, maybe someone went missing here recently. Who knows? It's cool. I like it a lot. Isle of the Ancients. This is another great uh, adventure. This one's a, a bit different in its format, and I really like the format of this one. And I like another aspect of this too, which is the treasure that you get in here. So this is four to six characters at fifth to seventh level. The idea is there's this jungle island in the middle of the Styx River, um, and you, you know, why are you here? Maybe you get stuck there. Maybe it's a, a place, if you're stuck in the jungle, you're lost in the jungle, and you find this place. Regardless of you, just, here's the map of it. It's got a few locations spread out over this little island. It's not huge. It's pretty small. The island's pretty small, so you can go from one place to another. But there's distinct, you know, encounter zones. It's just a dungeon, basically. But it's an external, an outdoor dungeon, and I like that. Um, the path to from A to D has B and C. You have uh, C has some interesting things happening there. I'm not sure why you couldn't just cut through the jungle, but maybe there's some, you know, reason why you can't, or maybe it's a lot harder. Or you have to make some checks, and you can just follow the path a little bit. Um, and what I really like about this is at the very end, you get a huge epic treasure hoard in Area F. 11,000 silver pieces, 6,000 gold pieces, 347 gems, each worth an average of 225 gold pieces, 209 golden objects and plates, goblets and plates each worth 25 gold, 101 pieces of jewelry, 100 gold pieces each, wondrous necklace with 20 rubies worth 15 to 20,000 gold pieces, two plus one daggers, a plus one sword, plus three versus insects, plus two short bow, plus one warhammer, plus two versus goblinoids, and the war horn of Asunath, which is a legendary artifact. Holy cow. For fifth, sixth, seventh level characters, this is insane how much money here is here. Which is why I love this. You could put this into, a, uh, into an adventure where the players are like lost in the jungle and they find this and they're like, great. What do we do with this? Right? We have all, we, we can't bring this with us. We barely have enough stuff to, you know, okay, we're going to take the, the necklace and, and we'll come back for the rest. Or maybe they have to, it's a whole quest. It becomes an entire campaign or adventure at least. Just getting this stuff back to where it's useful in civilization. Maybe they, they stumble on this place, then they have to go back to town, organize an expedition with boats. Maybe the enemies realize that they found the great treasure of Asunath and then rival adventuring parties or you know rivals try to stop them. You could make this a whole thing, and the whole adventure would be getting that money back to town. That's really cool. I like adventures like that, and this one is perfect because the, the jungle island itself is interesting. You've got some undead, you got some winged apes and jackals and stuff, but it's the treasure that you're going to run into that's so cool. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Really cool. The next adventure here is The Lost Son of Atlantis, or Last Son of Atlantis, excuse me. And this is basically just that scene in Conan the Barbarian where he finds the Sword of Atlantis, but made into a bit of an adventure. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the Atlantean Sword. Um, it's one to two characters at first level, so you could start off with, uh, this is sort of like the background to the Barbarian character. The Barbarian class was an additional class in the Slumbering City that he added in, and so you could have this be like the session zero for the barbarian right if you want to just play conan the barbarian play through the lot the last son of atlantis and that's what you get there's a, a little dungeon here with the ruins and there's ruined chariots and then the guy sitting on a throne with this legendary sword the prince of atlantis is a giant skeleton you fight him kill him uh and you take his blade and now you have the sword of atlantis and you can go forward and <laughs> the blade of the atlantean prince so again straight up out of conan the barbarian uh but great really really good 
uh, introductory little adventure. You could run this as a one-shot if, if someone, especially if someone wasn't familiar with Conan the Barbarian, <laughs> or they had maybe seen it back in the back in the day and hadn't seen it since or didn't know it a lot. You could just throw this in. Great adventure. I like this a lot. Uh, okay, but again, it's very small. And, I, and it's interesting, again, that it's one to two characters of first level. So run this as a very short game um, right at the beginning. The next adventure here is the Treasure Bowl of Set. Again, I know I've gone through a whole bunch of these, but there's just a whole bunch, and they're all great. The Treasure Bowl of Set is four to six characters of 8th to 10th level, and this is sort of like a mod... It looks sort of like a modular dungeon, um, but it's really you're just going through. It's, again, straight out of Conan the Barbarian. There's a Naga creature that's hidden in this bowl of gems, and you're trying to find the bowl of gems because there's enough money in there to satisfy a dozen kings and queens. Like, that sounds like something that Robert E. Howard would write. I love that. And you just have a, a bit of a dungeon here with the different parts of it, um, you know, connected to and how you get from one to the next. It's really cool. Again, you get what you might expect, right? Temple guards, uh, acolytes, um, you've got uh, traps, you've got lots of treasure, you've got lots of options for taking extra risks to get rewards. So I really like this one too, the treasure bowl of set, and it fits right into that, um, you know. Dungeon delving, risking hostile priests and sorcerers to get immense wealth and facing things that are beyond the normal, beyond the, the pale, right? Mostly what you're fighting are people, and then occasionally you get these weird things like a bug priest or the, the, the Naga king of Set. Really like that. And finally, the last adventure I'm covering is What Manner of Rogue? It's an adventure for one to two characters of fourth to fifth level. So again, you get that one to two characters, and I think this would be great as a solo adventure, a one level character. And not solo in terms of just you playing by yourself, but playing with one player uh, of fifth level maybe, because it's really, there's a lot of mon there's a lot of enemies to face, there's a lot of traps that are kind of interesting, and it would be fun to try to find your way into this manor. And that's the idea, is there's a wizard's manor, and he's got some rare items, and you're supposed to steal one. And you know, take the rest if you want, but many of them are cursed. And so you've got, you know, a, a pet basilisk, you've got manor guards and the sergeant, you've got an invisible stalker, you've got, you know, these just like very, very um, flavorful things that a wizard, an evil sorcerer, an evil wizard might have as his guards in his manor house and sneak into it, try to take it. And there's ways of dealing with the basilisk, for example, or the basilisk, and there's ways of getting through all this stuff, hidden hats and magical robes, um, books and, and crystal balls and genie lamps, right, just lots of stuff. So I, I like this one a lot too, and it fits with that sword and sorcery vibe. Um, but you wouldn't really want to do like a big party, like you know five or six players going into this. It makes sense to do it more like you know Conan going alone into the manor to steal the thing. Much more in that side side of an adventure game. So those are the eleven adventures by Tom Wilson uh, for again uh, from Throwy Games, all very sword and sorcery. All, all really, really awesome and flavorful. We have, again, the What Manner of Rogue, the Treasure Bowl of Set, Lost Son, the Last Son of Atlantis, the Isle of the Ancients, uh, the Thing with a Thousand Heads, Swirling the Sands of Sin, Canyon of Fractured Ice, Tower of the Last Defenders, Behind the Red Door, Once So Beautiful, and then again, the Charnel Chambers of the Thrice Damned Oathbreakers. Uh, you can check them all out. I'll put a link below to Drive Through RPG to Throw Away Games as page and so you can see all of these and all the other stuff there as well but these are the ones that i know i think they're awesome <laughs> really highly recommend them uh, and thank you again for tom for sending them to me not to be reviewed i don't think he didn't i think he sent them to everybody uh it was just awesome that he did and again i highly recommend them all they're all a dollar or two so pick up the ones that stood out to you for just a couple bucks um and uh, i think you'll have a lot of fun with these all right guys that's it for me i'll see you all in another video